however we feel about the monarchy, uh, we have all just lived through a really significant moment in the life of our nation. And whether or not we saw the whole thing yesterday, um, I'm sure virtually all of us have seen pictures or clips in the news or something. I sort of almost challenge you not to have seen a single picture of the coronation in the last 24 hours. So for those who did watch the service yesterday, I wonder how you would describe that service that happened in Westminster Abbey. Uh, not all the procession and the celebration moments apart from that, but the service in Westminster Abbey, um, how would you describe it? And this is the moment, Kevin, when I realise I haven't got a handheld mic in my hand, um, and it would be really helpful if I did. And Joanne's going to run and fetch me one. Thank you very much. So, have a little think. How would you describe that service that we saw in Westminster Abbey yesterday? Spiritual. Spiritual. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Awesome. 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 Uh, a once in a lifetime thing. A once in a lifetime thing. Unless you're really, really old. <laughs> Jamie. Long. Long. <laughs> Good call. Anybody else? What did you think the service was like yesterday? Judy? It's moving. Moving. Liz? Amazing. Amazing. Stephen? Christian. Christian. Okay, excellent. So, a good number of words that we might use to describe the service that we saw in the Abbey yesterday. And um, if I thought of one of mine, um, oh, oh, sorry, if I'd thought of it in time, um, I might have sent out a link for the order of service with a little bit of a commentary that went with it, because we got some of it from Hugh Edwards yesterday, didn't we? But actually, the Church of England has produced an order of service which has a whole commentary which goes with it that explains to us a whole lot more about what was going on during that service. It was such a rich service, wasn't it? And two of the words that I wrote down, somebody else has said it was amazing and it was profoundly Christian and very moving at times. So, um, let's have a think then um, about understanding a little bit more of that detail of the service. And first of all, to realise how far back some of those things go in history, okay? Because there were some of the things that we saw yesterday which don't just go back to 1953 or 1927 or 1911, or can anybody give me the next one in the series? 1902, very good. Uh, we won't do all of them. Or 1066, okay? But as far back as the Old Testament. And in a moment, Sarah's going to come and read our Bible reading for us. And we're going to read from the first book of Kings about when Solomon was made a king. So going way, way back into the Old Testament, does anybody have any idea how long ago that was that Solomon was made a king in the Old Testament? How long ago was that? Sorry? Garant? Five years ago. Thanks for that. Yeah, really, really helpful and constructive. Thank you. You're not getting extra cake later. Okay. Any, any, any guesses beyond five years? 500 BC. So how many years is that? Do our maths. Two and a half thousand. Okay. Any further offers? Yeah, over here. Sorry? Three thousand years ago. That is about right, okay? So it was about 3,000 years ago that Solomon was made king. Sarah, would you come and read this passage for us from the first book of Kings? Thank you. And let me say before Sarah reads it, as we listen to this passage, would you see how many things you can hear in this passage that you heard yesterday? Okay, so really careful listening. Okay, what do you hear in this passage? There are some names we heard yesterday. There are some phrases we heard yesterday. There are some things that happened yesterday. Okay, so have a really good listen. What can you hear in the reading that Sarah reads that we heard yesterday? Thank you. So from 1 Kings chapter 1, David makes Solomon king. 
Then King David said, Call in Bathsheba. So she came into the king's presence and stood before him. The king then took an oath. As surely as the Lord lives, who has delivered me out of every trouble, I will surely carry out this very day what I swore to you by the Lord, the God of Israel. Solomon, your son, shall be king after me, and he will sit on my throne in my palace. Then Bathsheba bowed down with her face to the ground, prostrating herself before the king and said, May my lord, King David, live forever. King David said, Call in Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaniah son of Jehoiada. When they came before the king, he said to them, Take your lord's servants with you, and put Solomon my son on my own mule, and take him down to Gihon. There shall Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him king over Israel. Blow the trumpet and shout, Long live King Solomon. Then you are to go up with him, and he is to come and sit on my throne and reign in my, palace, in my place. I have appointed him ruler over Israel and Judah. Benaniah, son of Jehoiada, answered the king, Amen. May the Lord, the God of my Lord the King, so declare it. As the Lord was with my Lord the King, so may he be with Solomon to make his throne even greater than the throne of my Lord King David. So Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaniah son of Jehoiada, the Ketherites, the Pelethites, went down and put Solomon on King David's mule, and they escorted him to Gihon. Zadok the priest took the horn full of oil from the sacred tent and anointed Solomon. Then they sounded the trumpet, and all the people shouted, Long live King Solomon! And all the people went up after him, playing pipes, and rejoicing greatly, so that the ground shook with the sound. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sarah. Now, I reckon, on my list, I reckon there are at least 11 things that we heard in that passage that we heard yesterday, okay? And we didn't hear that Bible reading yesterday, okay? I reckon there are at least 11 things. So, what have we got? Isaac. Zadok the priest, brilliant, that fantastic piece of music by Handel. Okay, William. The next person has to be from the back, not the front, okay? <laughs> William. Long live. Long live the king. Yep, brilliant. Any others? What else did we hear? Megan? Anointing with oil. Anointing with oil, yeah. Rob? I'm going to say the same thing. The same thing, okay. Any more for any more? Judy? Sacred tent. Sacred tent. Well, I'm not sure I had that one on my list. Very good. Any more? Oh. Taking an oath. Taking an oath. Yep, yeah, an oath. Joanne? May the king live forever. May the king live forever. Uh, tr sound the trumpets. Sound the trumpets. And we haven't got Paul or um, Gareth here this morning, but I suspect that if you were on the mall yesterday, that you felt the ground shake from the... Oh, Anna, you're here, sorry. Could you feel the ground shake when those bands went past? Oh, when they did that, they did, when they did um, the sound in, there was a gunfire. And you could hear that and feel it, yes? Yeah? So we hear that they, they sounded the trumpets and the ground shook with the noise. I reckon there was a fair amount of noise in London yesterday. So can you see that there are quite a lot of things that were part of yesterday that were in that passage? Um, did we mention Nathan the prophet as well as Zadok the priest? Because we heard about him as well, didn't we, um, in the same thing. Um, we heard as well about David saying, my son will become king after me. Um, and... I think we've got everything else. Rejoicing greatly. Um, there was a lot of rejoicing yesterday. 
So let's have a think then about what makes a king a king. And um, first of all, let's think about some other different jobs. I wonder, would anybody like to come and find a hat to wear? Anybody over on the carpet? Want to come and find a hat? First come, first served. You can choose which one you have. Jamie's going to go for that one. I thought he might. Police? Whoa. Any more for any more? Which one do you want? Don't take too long to choose, will you? You'll have that one, okay. That one. Which one are you going for? Rupert's stolen one, excellent. You can have that one. Very good. <laughs> Nia, you can have that one. Okay. There you go. Very good. Okay, excellent. So we've all got our headgear on. Who are you? What jobs are you doing with those hats on? <laughs> Behave. So we've got a policeman. We've got a king. We've got a fire chief. We've got, I think, another fire chief. Um, I'm not sure what you are. Are you a traffic warden or a baker or a policeman? Are you another policeman? Yeah. Yeah, you're another policeman. Nia's a policeman. And then we've got a jester. Excellent. Okay. Sorry, and Rupert's just being Rupert. Yeah, okay, marvellous. Okay, so um, what is it that makes these people these things? Does this hat instantly make you a policeman? No. Does your hat instantly make you a king? No. Does your hat instantly make you a fire officer? No. What is it that makes those people those things when they become those things? Training? Ability? Being what? Being those, Being those things. Thank you very much, Isaac. Yes, okay. Hard work, maybe. The skills that they've got. And sometimes those people apply for jobs, don't they? Many of us here, who's applied for a job in our time? Lots of us have applied for jobs, okay? But sometimes they are just chosen because they're really good at something. And somebody says, actually, that's the person for the job. That's the person we want. So, Jamie, step forward, because you've got the crown. You got there first. Well, hey. Okay. What about a crown? How does somebody get to be a king or a queen? Do they just blow up a crown and stick it on their head, Jamie? No. Okay. How does somebody get to be a king or a queen? Is it a sensible answer? <laughs> it's a realistic answer. It's a realistic answer. Go on, then. Well, their parents. Their parents died. Thank you. Yes, that's how somebody gets to be a king or a queen. Yes, very good. Okay. So kings and queens don't apply for the job. Uh, you're a king or a queen because of the family that you're born into. And when you're born into the royal family, you know that when you grow up, your job is going to be, if you're born in, uh, first born into the royal family, you know that's what your job is going to be when you grow, grow up. It's not, and it's not all about crowns and palaces and fancy clothes being a king or a queen is actually about serving people and serving the country you can go and sit down if you want if you want to take your hats with you you're welcome to do so but not take them home <laughs> so when our queen died last year queen elizabeth ii charles became king but yesterday we had that formal presentation and that formal crowning of charles as king and camilla as queen and as well as uh, the crown, uh, the actual moment, I think we've got it on the screen there, okay, we've got the actual moment. Can I just tell you what my claim to fame is from yesterday? He used to be my line manager. <laughs> I texted him last night. Yeah. So anyway, um, that's by the by. As well uh, as the crown, there were some other really important parts to the service, weren't there? Um, and I want us just to think particularly about the anointing. And as we heard, that goes right back to the Old Testament, when people were anointed in the Old Testament. Now, what was different or special about that part of the service yesterday? It was private. It was screened by some very beautiful screens, I have to say. Okay, but it was private. It was Charles's one and only moment, pretty much by himself before God. There were only two or three people who were able to see into that space at that time. 
He was out of sight of almost everyone, but he was there to be anointed as a sign of being chosen and set apart by God. And to be anointed in this way is to be set apart by God for his special purposes. And there are other times when we anoint people in church, aren't there? Sometimes we do it at baptism. Sometimes we do it at confirmation. Sometimes we do it when somebody is ordained or who, uh, when a, a minister comes into a new post, the bishop will ordain them. And it's like uh, the crowning was kind of the bit that we see, the human bit, if you like, and the anointing was, was the kind of God bit, the spiritual bit, the moment when Charles knows that he is set aside by God to be king of this country. And what did King Charles do just before he was anointed? took off his robes. He took off his royal robes and he was left in just a simple white shirt. And that's to remind us that King Charles actually is an ordinary person. He's a human being, the same as you are and the same as I am. So there might be lots of lovely things about being a king and living in palaces, but there are also things that aren't that easy And Charles needs God's help to do those things. And so in that moment, he takes off all the royal regalia and he comes in a simple white shirt before God to be anointed and to receive the strength and the power of God to do the thing for which he is set apart for uh, and which he is called to be. So what about us? What does God choose us for? What does God set us aside for? And how can we receive his help and strength and live as he wants us to do? Let's have a second Bible reading, which I'm going to read. It's on the screen. It's quite short. And do you remember a few weeks ago, we were looking at the Beatitudes from Matthew's Gospel? Well, straight after those words of Jesus, Jesus says this. He says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So there are things that God calls each of us to do individually and specifically, and there are also things that God calls all of us to do. And one of those is to let our light shine in the world and let the light of Jesus shine through us. In his first Christmas message, this uh, last Christmas, 2022, King Charles said this. He said, In the much-loved carol, O little town of Bethlehem, we sing of how in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. My mother's belief in the power of that light was an essential part of her faith in God, but also her faith in people. And it is one which I share with my whole heart. It is a belief in the extraordinary ability of each person to touch with goodness and compassion the lives of others and to shine a light in the world around them. This is the essence of our community and the very foundation of our society. So, it's a great weekend of celebration and partying. But let's use this weekend too to pray for King Charles, but also to pray for ourselves, to pray that we would listen to the call of God. Perhaps to take some time in this coming week to reflect on that. Do you know what God's call is to you? Do you know what God's call is to you? And if not, Who could you have a conversation with to talk about that, to explore that a bit more, to try and work that one out? Take some time to reflect on what God's call is for you. And maybe you'd like to come for prayer ministry during communion. When we come to share communion later, there'll be an opportunity to come for prayer ministry. There'll be members of the prayer ministry team available in the area behind me. 
and you might like that to, to use that as a helpful opportunity just to get somebody else to pray with you, to say, Lord, I want to be your servant and I need to know what your call is on my life, to ask for God to speak to you about that and to give you strength in following his call. And so as we go to do that, as we go perhaps in the coming week to reflect a bit on what is God's call on our lives, I thought we might use the words that the, of the prayer that King Charles used yesterday. Did you know it's actually the first time that a monarch has prayed that personal prayer in front of all? So do you remember when he knelt down at the front of Westminster Abbey and by himself he prayed a prayer uh, to the Lord our God? So we're going to use the words of that prayer this morning for ourselves. It was very moving to see King Charles do that, to be on his knees before God, praying for God's help to do what only he, Charles, is called to do. So in whatever it is that God is calling us to do, may we be faithful as the Lord's servants. So let's pray together the words that are on the screen. Let's just have a moment of quiet first, just to think about what we've heard. Think about that sense of God's call on our lives. And let's respond with these words. God of compassion and mercy, whose son was sent not to be served, but to serve. Give grace that I may find in your service perfect freedom, and in that freedom, knowledge of your truth. Grant that I may be a blessing to all your children, that together we may discover the ways of gentleness and be led into the paths of peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.